perhatian untuk mahasiswa yang duduk di paling belakang silahkan turun. Yang di bawah diisi dulu ya. Bisa yang depan silahkan maju. Yang duduk. Yuk di diisi segera. Yuk, masih yang di depan ini masih kosong. Empat lagi. Kosong silakan diisi bagian-bagian yang kosong ya. Tidak harus duduk itu semuanya jejari koncone kabe. Yuk silahkan di depan ini masih di sebelah. Yuk di, di bawahnya Rizky itu masih ada dua. Terus di sampingnya Eko itu masih ada empat. Yuk silahkan yang nomor dua dari belakang itu siapa Pusna nggak bisa ngelihat ya Oh ada Nurmalia ada Dina itu yang itu masih ada empat no, depan Ayo sebelahnya itu ada email da siapa lagi itu ya Oh, Uy, Putri Salsya. Ya, ini masih ada satu lagi tuh loh sebelah Nurul. Kursinya putih digantikan, silakan. Yuk, sebelahnya Inas juga masih kosong. Ayo, yang mau duduk di sebelahnya Inas itu masih ada kursi yang kosong.
teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Our international class is about to begin. Please have a nice seat. And to online participants, please turn on your camera and mute your microphone. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The respectable the speaker of international class of Permasi 2022, Mr. Abdul Qadir Kawasmi, PhD, the Honorable Head of Magister Program in Pharmacy of Mamadiyah Surakarta University, Mrs. Apoteker Zaki Kolisah Empam, Clean PhD, the Honorable Head of the Office of Language Development and Partnerships, Mrs. Aidarus Mariana, Escop and Esman, the Honorable Dean of Health Sciences Faculty, Mrs. Hermia Rezeki, Escop and S, MCOP SPCOM, and Vice Deans of Health Sciences Faculty, the Honorable Head of Undergraduate Program in Pharmacy, Mrs. Apoteker Wirasti SSE MSC, the respectable Vice Rector of One for Academic Affairs, Mr. Muhammad Arifin, SKP MCAP, and also we welcome all participants of International Class of Pharmacy 2022. First of all, let us praise to the Almighty, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, because of His blessing, we are able to attend this event. Secondly, peace be upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last messenger of Allah who has guided human life from a distraction into the right way of Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Muhammad Bahtiar Al-Farizi. As the master of ceremony in our big event, the International Class of Pharmacy by Team, Natural Medicines and Pharmacies, Palestinian Perspective. Let me read our agenda this morning. First, opening. Second, recitation of the Holy Quran. Third, singing the national anthem of Indonesia Raya, Sang Surya, and Mars of University of Muhammadiyah Pekajangan Pekalongan. Fourth, speeches. Fifth, prayer recitation. And sixth, closing. The first agenda is the opening. Let's open this event by reading Basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The second agenda is reciting of the Holy Quran, which will be read by Adisti. To Adisti, you might take the floor. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udzu billahi minasy syaithanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa basyiril ladzina amanu wa 'amilus shalihati anna lahum jannah. Anna lahum jannatin tajri min tahtihal anhar Kullama ruziku minha min thamaratir rizqa Kalu, kalu hadha alladhi ruzikna min qabl Wa utubihi mutashabiha Walahum fiha azwajum mutahara 
وهم فيها خالدون إن الله لا يستحي أن يطرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها فأما الذين آمنوا فيعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وأما الذين كفروا فيقولون ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا وما يضل به إلا الفاسقين الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يفصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك هم الخاسرون صدق الله العظيم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To others, stay. Thank you. And please have a seat. Coming up for a brief moment, we would like to invite you to stand up and sing the national anthem of Indonesia Raya and followed by Sang Surya and Mars of University of Muhammadiyah Pekajangan Pekalongan. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand up.
ladies and gentlemen, please have a seat. The next agenda, our speech. The welcoming speech will be delivered by the Dean of Health Sciences Faculty. And to officially open this event, to Mrs. Hermi Rezeki, ASCAP and NS MCAP SPECOM, please, the floor is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. His Excellency, uh, Vice Rector of Muhammadiyah Pekajangan Pekalongan Universitas, Mr. Muhammad Arifin, the respectable the speaker of international class of Farmasi 2022, Profesor Abdel Kadir Kawasme, PhD. <coughs> Welcome to uh, <coughs> Muhammadiyah Pekajangan Pekalongan University. The Honorable Head of the Office of Language Development and Partnership, Mr. Aizarus Ikis, Aizarus Mariana. Uh, the Honorable Head of Undergraduate Program and Pharmacy, Ms. Wirasti. Uh, special thank you, uh, Bunda Saki from Surakarta Muhammadiyah University. And also, we welcome all part participants of International Class of Pharmacy 2022. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, puji syukur kehadirat Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala yang telah melimpahkan rahmat, hidayah, nikmat, sehat kepada kita semua, sehingga kita dapat berkumpul di sini di uh, aula UMPP untuk uh, mendengarkan atau untuk uh, mengikuti acara internasional West Lecture. Uh, dengan tema Natural Design of Pharmacies Palestinian Perspektif. <tuh> tak lupa salawat dan salam kami aturkan kepada junjungan kita, Nabi Besar Muhammad Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yang kita tunggu syafaatnya di hari Diaumul Akhir. Honestly, I'm re I'm re really appreciating with the head of undergraduate program in pharmacy, Bu Wirasti and the team who has worked together to have a guest lecture with inviting our distinguished speaker, Professor Abdel Kadir Kawasmeh, PhD. Of course, this international class with time, natural medicine and pharmacies, Palestinian perspective, will have many benefits, especially for the pharmacy surgeon. Harapan saya eh, kepada seluruh peserta, mahasiswa Prodi Sarjana Farmasi, baik yang ada di eh, ruangan aula ini, atau yang mengikuti lewat Zoom, mudah-mudahan dapat mengikuti acara eh, International Guest Lecture ini sampai akhir dan mendapatkan ilmu atau pencerahan dari eh, Profesor Abdel Kadir Kawasmeh, PhD. On the next, I wish we could collaboration, more program, especially in education, research, and community service, considering that we have not only pharmacy here, but also three faculties at well, Faculty of Health Science, Faculty of Economic and Business, and Faculty of Computer Science and Technology. Itu saja dari saya. Terima kasih. Kurang lebihnya saya mohon maaf. Wabillahi Wa taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks to Mrs. Hermi Rezeki, SCOP and SMCOP SPECOM 
for the enlightening speech and for the officially opening of this event. Ladies and gentlemen, now we move to the next agenda and we would like to invite Juan Bagus Pambudi. Juan Bagus Pambudi, please kindly close this agenda with prayer recitation. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mari senak kita berdoa kepada Allah Subhanahu wa taala untuk kelancaran acara ini dan juga agar ilmu yang kita dapat pada pagi hari ini agar bermanfaat. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innallaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna 'alan nabi ya ayyuhalladzina amanu sallu 'alaihi wa sallimu taslima. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hamdan syakirin, hamdan na'imin, hamdan yu'afi ni'amahu wa yukafi'u mazidah. Ya Rabbana walakal hamdu walakal syukru. Kama yang bagi li jalal wajhikal karim wa'adimi sultanik. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wabarik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma gfir. Lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka sami'un qaribun mujibud da'wat ya qadiyal hajat Allahumma inna nas'aluka salamatan fid din wa 'afiyatan fil jasad wa ziyadatan fil ilmi wa barakatan fil rizqi wa tawbatan qabla al maut wa rahmatan 'inda al maut wa maghfiratan ba'da al maut Allahumma inna nas'aluka 'ilman nafi'an wa rizqan thayyiban wa amalan muttaqabbalan Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanah wa qina adzaban nar min fadlika subhanaka rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wassalamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh John Bagus Pambudi, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the agenda. Let us close this opening ceremony of the International Class of Pharmacy 2022 with reading Hamdalah together. Alhamdulillah. I am Muhammad Bahtir Al-Farizi. As the master of ceremony, would like to thank to the audience for the participation. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start our session on the international class of pharmacy, we have one important agenda signing the document of implementation of agreement between the head of undergraduate program in pharmacy, Faculty of Health Sciences, University of Muhammadiyah, Pekajangan Pekalongan, Mrs. Apoteker Wirasti, SSEMSC, and the head of pharmacy department, Faculty of Pharmacy and Medical Sciences, Hebron University, Mr. Abdul Qadir Kawasini, PhD, for Mrs. Apoteker Wirasti, SSE, MSC, and Mr. Abdul Qadir Kawasini, PhD, please put yourself into the place. And we would like to invite Mr. Muhammad Arifin, SKP MKS, Mrs. Herni Rezeki, SKP NS, MKP SPCOM, and Mrs. Aida Rusmariana, SKP NSMAN, to be witnesses. Please put yourself into the place.
Thank you very much, and please have a seat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we now we'll start our session on the international class of Permasi 2022. Let me invite our distinguished speaker, Mr. Abdul Qadir Kawasmi, PhD, and a great moderator, Mr. Apotheker Ekwa Mugianto, PhD, to the stage. Please give big applause. Thank you. I think it is more comfortable to put up my mic here, and I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, Professor Abdel. Nice to meet you. And welcome to Pekalongan, city of Batik. And hopefully, you enjoy the trip from Surakarta to Pekalongan. Okay, and good morning, everyone. The honorable lecture, Professor uh, Abdel, and all the participants. Let us thank to the Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because of His blessing, we are able to come here, join in this uh, international guest lecture uh, here. And before we start the event, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Eko Bugianto. Uh, I'm a lecturer from uh, UMPP, Universitas Muhammadiyah of Pekacangan Palawan here in the Department of Pharmacy. And that will be your moderator to guide you through the uh, around one hour head. It's around one hour head. Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the presentation today is about the natural medicines and pharmacies Palestine perspective. So first of all, before we begin the uh, agenda, the events, I have to read the CV of Professor Abdel. For the committee, I need to show the, okay. Okay, I will write to read the Dr. Abdel uh, CV. So his name is Dr. Abdel Kader Kawasma. He is a teaching staff and also assistant professor from Hebron University, Palestine. And he is a renowned scholar in the field of phytochemistry and chemical ecology with many publications in high impact journals such as Frontier in Pharmacology, Journal of Chemical Ecology and Antioxidant Reducing Signaling. He hold a PhD degree in Chemical Ecology and Phytochemistry from Charles Sturt University, Australia in 2022. And he's currently working as an assistant professor in the Faculty of Pharmacy and Medical Science of Hebron University, Palestine. If you want to contact uh, Dr. or uh, Professor Abdel, you could uh, send him an email in fdq at hebron.edu or you may search in Google Scholar or Research Kit. And about the educational backgrounds, 
he hold bachelor degree in 2001 in pharmacy Al Isra University Amman Jordan and in 2005 he hold master degree in pharmaceutical science in the University of Sydney Australia and finally he hold PhD degree in 2012 uh, in phytochemistry in Charles Sturt University Australia he also has an academic and administrative experience I will, I will read it. In 2001 until 2005, he, is, he was laboratory assistant faculty pharmacy in the University of Sydney, Australia. And 2008 and to 2011, he was a lecturer, faculty of science, Charles Sturt University, Orange, Australia. And 2000, from 2012 and now, he is a lecturer in uh, in faculty of pharmacy and medical science in Hebron University, uh, Palestine. Many publications have published by uh, Professor Abdel. I think many of them. I I just mentioned nine, but if you search in the Google Scholar, uh, you may find a lot of uh, publication by Professor Abdel. But uh, he focused in uh, ecology, uh, phyto phyto phytochemistry, and antioxidant signaling. And his research interests in identifying molecular target for herbal drugs and also screening biological activities of wild Palestinian plants. Okay, ladies and Gentlemen, let's begin the event's international lecture entitled Natural Medicine and Pharmacies in Palestinian Perspectives. So, Professor Abdel, uh, you have 60 minutes to deliver your presentations and continue with this discussion uh, sessions. And Professor Abdel, time is yours. Thank you for the introduction. Thanks to everyone in this room. Uh, the Vice President, the Dean, the Faculty of Pharmacy and Medical Sciences staff. Thanks to all the students for coming in this morning. Where is the presentation? <laughs> okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting all this formality today. Uh, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart uh, for such uh, uh, unexpected event. Uh, my name is Abdul Qadir Qawasmi. I'm from the Faculty of Pharmacy and Medical Sciences from Hebron University from Palestine. And I thought to make my presentation as simple as possible. Uh, so you get the idea what we are doing as a doctors in the universities. We're not only teaching, is teaching students, but also we do uh, research and we develop our students' skill in research. So the topic of my presentation today is natural medicine. Oh, I like this. Natural medicine and pharmacists Palestinian perspective. Where is this? No, that's the okay. This uh, for the slide. So the point have to be the top one. Which one? The top one. Where is it? Ah, it's all right. Just one minute.
far. Okay, it's okay. So the title of my topic today is uh, Natural Medicines and Pharmacists' Palestinian Perspective. Uh, so, as you know, I am a pharmacy student. I was a pharmacy student. I graduated from Al Isra University. Uh, the picture on the left hand side, third floor. Uh, it was a nice experience being undergraduate student for five years in a pharmacy in Jordan. Uh, and then I had my master degree from the University of Sydney in cell biology and cell science. Uh, the picture at the middle. And then I had my PhD uh, in chemistry, phytochemistry, chemical ecology from Charles State University, Australia. Uh, the picture on the left hand side. So when you grow, you finish your PhD, you, re you realize that your job is quite difficult. You have to think, uh, what are you going to do after you finish your PhD? You're not only teacher. Now it's your job to develop your student's ability. So I had to think about my research. So my research, which is related to my study, phytochemical and biological screening of wild Palestinian plant. And this will be the focus of my talk today. I also am interested in my PhD work, which is a plant endophyte biochemical uh, interaction. Uh, the reason why I'm interested now in my PhD work, which I have done 10 years ago, is due to the fact that I have done this from chemical ecology perspective. Now I am looking at this project from a pharmacist perspective, which gives me a new direction. Uh, the third topic is herbal medicine dispensing in pharmacy. Uh, we have so many issues in Palestine, which is related uh, to dispensing of uh, the herbal medicines, the food supplements, the minerals. And also today I will be discussing these with you. Uh, another thing which is new uh, is the fact that we now in 22 century, 22, 21st century or 22? 21st century. Uh, the molecular targets of herbal medicine in diseases management are largely unknown. And now we have the tools, we have the instruments, so we can really know how these medicines actually work. Also, another project which uh, I'm interested in working on is the microbiota and the herbal medicine how the herbal medicines will affect the microbiota. The microbiota are the bacteria that lives inside our gut system. Uh, final project, uh, which is somehow out of my um, herbal medicine uh, thinking is the social media and how the social media play a critical role in shaping the dispensing practices in Palestinian pharmacies. Can we move to the second slide? Uh, so this is uh, Palestine. Palestine is a very nice place, although most of you know the conflict. So Palestine is the home of the, the golden dome of the rock, the top photo on the left-hand side, and Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, which is just next to it. So these are two different places, but in one uh, place. Uh, and also, it's uh, the home of Masjid Omar, which is a historic place. So it's been built since the time of the Khalifa Omar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu an. And also, uh, the church, which is just next to it, because the Khalifa Omar ibn al-Khattab refused to pray on the church, in the church. So he prayed somewhere next to it. So in Jerusalem, you will find a church and a mosque next to each other, which is really wow. 
And where I come from, I come from a Hebron city. You can see Al Abraham Mosque, Al Haram Al Ibrahimi, we call it. It's one of the oldest building in the world. And yeah, uh, this is Palestine. Uh, the last uh, figure on the on your right hand side at the bottom, you can see Palestine, which is a grain in 1947, and then the occupation is eating Palestine base by base, and now Palestine on the green, those green dots, you can see them at the right. Can I see this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. So this is Palestine now, the green dots in here. So it's been like this, now it's like this. Inshallah, Palestine will get back. Okay, thank you. So this is now Palestine. So Hebron city. Uh, it's a middle-sized city, it's like Solo, uh, but it's vibrant anyway, like we don't live in a camp. So this is an image of the old city of, Fal of Hebron, and this is a closer look to the old building a thousands of years ago. The, these buildings still are inhabited. And this is the modern Hebron city, you can see, and the, during the night the city is vibrant and uh, livable. So Hebron uh, University, where I came from, uh, Hebron University has 10 different colleges and it offers more than 60 programs for the bachelor degree and for the master degree. The one where um, I work, I work in the program of bachelor of pharmacy and also the master of herbal medicine. These are the two courses we offer in the faculty of pharmacy and medical sciences. Uh, this is a very nice image uh, where taken by master students. It was a Saturday afternoon. The university is quiet. And it was a thunderstorm. I don't know if you can see it clearly. It was a thunderstorm in here. Uh, this is from the window of the lecture. Uh, this image, it's like you guys. I hope we do this uh, photo now and we take it after five years. So you are first, first year students in organic uh, chemistry lab. Uh, we had this photo and then we repeated after five years, 2014, 2019. You can see they all, all of them, they, they're growing and they're growing beard and mustache as well. <laughs> so Mohanad. Uh, Osama, this guy is one of the smartest students in the Faculty of Pharmacy, and he is now preparing himself to go to United Kingdom for his PhD degree. Uh, Bilal, Yazan, all of them now graduated, and they have uh, nice positions in uh, different pharmaceutical companies. So this is a little bit of introduction about Palestine, Hebron, Hebron University, and where I work. Now start with the first project which is phytochemical and biological screening of wild Palestinian plants. So this work has been done by one of my master students. Her name is Sahar. And she was, she is a mother and a school teacher and a master student. So much things to do. And she has insisted to do her master degree and she, is, she has successfully published her work. And yeah, with this work, uh, this is where it comes to think after you finish your PhD degree. The master course has started three years ago in Hebron University. Uh, so I thought, why, what I'm going to do with these students? So I thought, why not looking at the Palestinian wild plants where we don't have that much work on these plants. So we thought, yeah, we should study wild Palestinian plants for three different points. Uh, the biodiversity in Palestine. Palestine is quite diverse area and I will talk to that in details. 
The active compounds in these plants, the wild plants, are largely unknown, and there is a few number of scientific evidence implicating these plants in treating diseases, and this is very important to us. So in terms of the biodiversity, uh, Palestine contributes to 3% of global diversity like it's a small piece of land but yet it has wow three percent of the global uh, diversity why is this happening because of the climate change like up in the north here it is cold and snowy most of the time mountainous we have coastal regions we have desert regions uh, we have hot warm in the middle and we have the lowest point on earth which is jericho and the dead sea so such diversity in the environment have created different uh, wild type of wild plants. So Palestine is a home of more than 2,000 plant species. 2,000 plant species. Also, they are, it is a home of 167 unique plant species. In that piece of land, there are 167 plant species that are unique. So these plants, in most cases, we don't know what they contain. So we, in our labs, we decided to develop techniques to detect or identify the essential oils or the volatile oils of these plants. Then we are currently developing techniques to detect the alkaloids. The alkaloids mean the compounds which contain nitrogen and you isolated from natural plants. And we're currently working on phenolic compound and you will see some of the results in this study which are related to the phenolic compound. So yes, I told my student, yeah, it is the time now we need to go to the field and collect these uh, Palestinian wild plants. Uh, from these Palestinian wild plants, a common plant which grows everywhere, it's called Silibum marinum. Silibum marinum. It grows everywhere. On the side of the streets, you will find this plant. And another common plant, it's called Hyosimus aureus, Aram balistinium, Ecbalium elatrium, and Micromeria fruticosa. So these are selected five wild Palestinian plants we started, we decided to work on. Let's have a look. And this is a very nice um, uh, picture or image. Uh, the fact that these, comp these plants, when you look in PubMed, the database, uh, under keywords, like you search under keywords, we did not say specified our research. So you will find that Celebum marinum has 1,100 publication. So these are these numbers here are the number of publication uh, concerning this plant. Hyosimus aureus, eight publication. Aram balestinium, 12 publication. Equalium elatrium, 89 publications. Micromeria proticosa, 59 publications. So there isn't many publications regarding this plants. And the most important thing, is the fact that if you look at these publications with the exception Celebum marinum, you will find that these plants are mentioned within the text. So between the brackets, there is no specific studies designed for each of these plants. So it just mentions as part of the folkloric and the traditional medicines used in the uh, Arabic world. So we said, okay, this is a good idea. While Palestinian plants, we need to study them. No one has done this work. So yeah, we are the first to do this work. So we decided, okay, at Hebron University, master degree has started three or four years ago. Uh, so we started, we starting from the scratch, from the zero. And this is a very challenging task. We have no chemicals, no tools, no instruments, and you need to establish this from the zero. So, okay, what can we do? So we said, okay, 
we're going to do an essential oil. So we need a GCMS. So we bought GCMS. Uh, then we decided, okay, we're going to do an alkaloids. Alkaloids you require HBLC and LCMSMS. We bought H HBLC, which is affordable, but LCMSMS wasn't affordable. And okay, we want to do uh, phenolic compounds and also this urging us to buy LCMSMS and maybe in the future we will buy one. And also we can do biological screening. Uh, these are techniques that we learned during our PhD and we have to pass it to our students. So we decided to do a DBBH assay and ABTS assay. DBBH and ABTS, it is like the free radicals in our body. They are get eaten by the antioxidant. If the plant has antioxidant, you, you put it on the DBBH, the DBBH color will disappear. And the same thing with ABTS. Uh, in the faculty of pharmacy, we also opened uh, medical sciences. We have medical sciences students. Uh, so that's why we had an excellent facility to test for antimicrobial activity. So we can get those extracts from natural products and we test them against the gram positive, gram negative and fungal and see how these extracts can uh, affect the bacterial growth. Uh, anti-cancer, anti-cancer then we talk about a cell level. At this stage, we don't have a cell level. So we, I'm not going to talk uh, or present any information about cancer. Uh, but we also recently started to develop anti-amylase and anti-lipase activity in vitro. Uh, and also I don't have any data regarding these uh, activities. Uh, one of the interesting things uh, is the NRF2. It's a molecular um, target uh, for um, uh, some of the extracts. When it is activated, it protects the cell from death. And when it is inhibited, uh, the cell will eventually die. I am not presenting the whole uh, work that we've done at Hebron University. So it's basically this table shows five replicates of different extracts from the plant called the Qualium elatrium. So the data here represents the zone of inhibition in millimeter uh, from Qualium elatrium against E. coli. So the main was 6.5, 8.5, 8.5 for the three respective extracts. So we could argue here that Equalium elatrium could possibly have antimicrobial activity. Then quickly moving, uh, this is also Equalium elatrium extract against Staphylococcus aureus. Again, 6.5, 7.5 and 6.75. So we also can build the same argument that Equalium elatrium has antimicrobial activity against E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus. The GCMS, GCMS is a very powerful technique in herbal medicine, and I recommend everyone want to do some research, a valued research to use the GCMS. GCMS skills are really necessary. With GCMS, uh, we had the the plant, we extracted it with methanol. Then the crude extract was injected into the GCMS. So in this chromatogram, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, about 22 compounds. But I'm here just showing the top seven compounds. So it's about 22 compounds. And this is logical. I've done this during my PhD and I know plants uh, typically contain 25, 30, up 40 volatile compounds, which, can you which you can detect using the GC. So the, the good GCMS is the fact that you can take each beak each compound, let's say seven here, 
and you can get the fragments. The fragments means the molecular masses of that compound. On GCMS, the compound get hit by a voltage and the breakdown and reads the masses. And from these, from these masses, you will be able to identify the compounds. And we probably the first, we identified the volatile compounds in the plant, Ecbalium elatrium. For example, nonanoic acid, decan, biol, uh, decanoic acid, etc., etc. So we've been able to identify the volatiles in such a plant. No one has done this before, which is good. And we've done this with methanolic extract, same work with dichloromethane extract, which is a, a, a more, uh, uh, let me say, uh, likes to, do, to take the nonpolar compound. We also detected kind of maybe 20, 22 compounds. And also same thing, we've done it with the ethanolic extract. Methanolic and ethanolic extract were almost similar. So these are the compounds in the ethanolic extract. Okay. Uh, getting to, once we've done this, actually the hardest part is to establish the lab work. It's not getting the results. So once we've done this, okay, we said, okay, uh, in that type of things, we need to move forward with, the, with some of these plants. So we've done this experiment on many plants. So we need to move on at cellular level. And this is one of the challenging uh, um, tasks that we still have. So we are unable to do any cell culture thing in Hebron University. And also animal levels. We don't have any animal levels. It would be really, really, really nice to move from basic science to the science where you can test your plants. You test them on the cell, you test them on animals, and you confirm your results. Uh, having to move to uh, clinical trials. Uh, in Palestine, we don't do any clinical trials. I think in Indonesia, you started to do some clinical trials, which involves a human. Uh, China, maybe, and India, one of the uh, largest countries that they do clinical trials on their herbal medicine. Uh, Equipment-wise, we are unequipped with LC, MS, MS, and NMR. And this also, one of my goals to visit Indonesia is to learn how to use um, these machines, particularly the LC, MS, MS. Hopefully, we can get one soon at Tiburon University. So this is uh, the first project, which is about herbal medicine. My specialty, the field that I like to work most. Uh, the second project is about my PhD work, which is chemical consequences of endophytic fungi, lolium perenne grass mutualism. Up to this, this was my PhD. The last line here, a potential for a new bioactive compound. Here where it comes the pharmacy, my pharmacy skills. So we can see in this image, this is the field of lolium perenne. You can see here there's a line which separates two type, let's say it's the same grass, but one with the endophyte and the other one with no endophyte. Which one you think is better? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the left, this one. This one looks much better than this one. This one looks much better than this one because of the endophyte. So there must be something happening. Let's see what is this. So the endophyte, the word endophyte, me endo means in, and phyte means a plant. So it's something inside the plant. Endophyte is something inside the plant. And it's a fungal. So this means a fungus that lives inside the plant. Everyone now would think 
that a fungus lives inside the plant, this must be a pathologic that causes a disease to the plant. In actual fact, here we are talking about a fungus which forms a symbiotic relationship with the plant. They live together. It's like the bacteria, we have it in our gut. Does it cause any trouble to us? No. In actual fact, we get benefit from it and the bacteria itself get benefit from us. So it forms a mutual relationship. The fungus form a mutual relationship with the plant and they live together. Uh, this image here, uh, you can see the cells of the plant and you can see here dark blue colors. These dark blue colors is the hyphae, fungal hyphae that is inside the plant. So since the fungus and the plant, they live together, the plant must accommodate the fungus. There must be kind of a communication between the plant and the fungus. So they both uh, like each other and live together. So this is the target of my talk today. Uh, highlight the main chemicals involved in fungus and the grass interaction. Uh, so let's think, um, who created this fungal endophyte? The first who created these guys are a group from New Zealand. You know New Zealand, it is the country of the cattle. It is the country where the cattle are more than a human. So they need food for the cattle and they need food which persist environmental changes and resist environmental changes. So they developed this fungus to have a good quality of the grasses for their uh, animals. So the, the fungus, the first and the most common fungus is the wild type, which is like the control. The wild type, which has everything. Then those, in, those in New Zealanders, they developed AR1 and AR37 fungus, and they put them inside the plant and they market them. Uh, someone may ask what happens to AR2, AR3, AR4, AR, etc., etc. There are so many ARs, but most of them, they failed to be statistically significant uh, to produce plants which resist environmental changes. The only two which were successful, they are AR1 and AR37. So that was basically the, one of the top. the space infected his suit right so he becomes more stronger less happier no he was happier yeah so he was stronger uh, but he was mood shifting like he was uncontrolled so it's the same thing with the endophyte the endophyte infect the same plant and make the plant stronger so it is the same same thing So why the plant has become more stronger? The reason why the plant has become more stronger is due to the fact that the fungus and the host, which is the plant, have produced a range of secondary compounds which belongs to phenols, volatiles, and alkaloids. So the plant has become stronger because they produce these kind of compounds. And we know the plant, they don't have immune response. So they tend to respond to environmental challenges by releasing chemical compounds or chemical messengers. So the question now is what the endophyte 
has done with the secondary compounds in a plant and how these secondary compound could benefit us. So we know their agricultural impact. So the plant will be will produce more. Uh, we know ecological. So so many studies, ecological studies have been done. And one of my actually my PhD was under this category, ecological studies. I have tested the effect of these compounds on insects. They attacking the plant. Uh, environmental. Can we use this technique to help the environment or protect the environment? Uh, but the most interesting part to me is how these new chemicals produced in grass in the fight interaction, we can utilize them in pharmaceutics and to know their pharmacological activity. So we had those grasses, we collected them. Actually, we did, I did not collect them. Actually, I got them from New Zealand. So I make sure that my grasses are the right grasses. I had a grasses with no endophyte. I had the grasses with endophyte, which is a wild type. I had a grasses from, uh, which has AR1 endophyte. I had the grasses with AR37 endophyte. I, I planted them in, in uh, Australia. I grow them, I harvested them. Then I looked at the antioxidant, the volatile compound and the alkaloids. That was the topic of my PhD. It looks simple. So let's uh, look at the antioxidant. With the antioxidant, we use the DBBH assay. Uh, in that one, uh, this orange line represents the lolium perin, the grass with, the with no endophyte. So the antioxidant activity of endophyte free is the lowest compared with AR1 and AR37, the green and the brown lines. But still, the wild type has the highest antioxidant activity. So what you could probably conclude from this slide, we know that antioxidant is a representative as a representation of how much phenolic compounds you have. So you would say that in wild type, wild type has uh, wild type causes a stress in the plant more than AR1 and AR37, and no stress is present in the endophyte grasses. So you can see phenolic compounds here is higher than these ones, than these ones, and than the endophyte F3. So when I've done this, uh, you know my supervisor is a quite ecologist. <laughs> So I took opportunity where my supervisor, he was out of the country, he was in India. And I sent these publications uh, to, let's say more a chemistry oriented journals and they got accepted. And my supervisor, when he came back, he was so happy that these are accepted. And then he let me free in the lab to do whatever I want. At the beginning, the supervisor is skeptical, like, won't leave you alone unless you prove yourself that you are uh, a quality student. So actually I published two papers from this work. Then the GCMS uh, on the endophyte free, endophyte wild type, endophyte AR1 and endophyte AR37. You can see from this graph that the grass irrespective of the endophyte, they produce same volatile compounds. With the GCMS, we assess the volatile compounds. Say so they all have same profile, no difference. The only difference we had minor uh, quantitative differences between each, each of these compounds. So the endophyte basically does not affect the volatile profile that much. And also this is a new finding anyway. This is a finding which gives you a hint. And that work 
it gets recognized by some journals, even though I didn't, I did not have a differences. So volatiles in perennial rye glass infected with the strains of endophytic fungus. Here where it comes, I had to have those little black cockroaches. I put them in the middle and see where the direction they goes. So we said that these insects, they go to the plant not based on the volatile compounds. So that work was recognized and was ecologically recognized by Journal of Applied Entomology. Wow, I'm a pharmacist and I publish in entomology. You know what entomology is? Entomology means insects, the science of insects. Uh, the last part is all the alkaloids. So we planted the seeds from wild type, AR1, AR7, and endophytofree. Actually, the endophytofree, they, they, they do not contain any endophyte. They do not contain any alkaloid. Okay. So here is something interesting. So the plant with the fungus, they have alkaloids. But the plant with no fungus, they have no alkaloids. Wow, this is massive in uh, plant science. So we looked at the endophyte wild type. The endophyte wild type produces a range of alkaloids. These alkaloids are chalcone, I think, uh, lol lolitrem B, uh, I can't read them, uh, deoxy, something in here. So it produces one, two, three, four, five, six different alkaloids. The plant alone does not produce alkaloids. A plant with endophyte, they produce alkaloids. Here where the plant becomes stronger because they produce alkaloids. And these alkaloids, uh, if you are interested, they are toxic to insects. So the insects, they come they eat these grasses in the field. They come to the wild type, they don't eat it. They stay away from it. So the grass stays healthy and, and beneficial for animals. So this is kind of a kind of a resistance that we had in the wild type of plant. Okay, what these figures uh, uh, represent, uh, I know previously that these plants, they produce these alkaloids, but I had to come with an idea. How about during early stages of the growth of the plant, how these alkaloids change? So we had the seeds, we planted them. The seeds takes about a week to grow, to start to appear from this, from this soil. And then it takes, and then from the day they appear, we started to calculate the days. We started to harvest after one week, Two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, five, five by seven, yeah, till fifth, five days after growing. So I harvested my plants week by week by week, and I measured the level of alkaloids in these harvested plants. So you can see there is a decrease in the level of all alkaloids as the plant grow. And this is logical. Do you know what? Because this seed one seed has the highest amount of alkaloids in it, but when they're starting to grow, the alkaloids moves from the seed to the leaves, to the tillers, we call it tillers. So, and I'm, har I'm harvesting just the tillers, the green part, not the seed. So as the plant grow, the concentration of the alkaloids in the leaves is reduced. Unfortunately, we did not continue with the days here, but I'm sure at one stage, maybe 60 days after, the plant and the endophyte will, the endophyte moves from the seed to the tiller, and when they start to interact with each other, they start producing the alkaloids. So this is the profile, that, that one was the profile of the wild type. This is the profile of AR1. AR1 only produces pyramine. And the wild type also produces pyramine. And you can see they have almost the same profile. And this is the AR. 
what is this one? This is the AR37. AR37 it produces only an alkaloid called epoxygenthetrim or epoxygenthetrim G. So they produces only two alkaloids. And even though these two alkaloids are declined uh, in the early stages of the growth. So from this basic study, what we conclude is a new typhodium endophyte, and this is very important, induces de novo synthesis of a range of a new set of alkaloids in grasses. So endophyte alone does not produce alkaloids. The plant alone does not produce alkaloids. Endophyte grass together, they produce alkaloids. So new typhodium endophyte alters antioxidant activity and the quantities of the volatile grasses. So let's go back to the figure. Uh, we can see that the antioxidant has been significantly altered, saying that the phenolic compounds were altered and the volatile compounds, only minor quantitative uh, significance being detected. So 0.1, 0.2 was part of, part of my PhD, but 0.3 is still the goal. The pharmacological effects of endophyte induced compounds in grasses are yet to be known. We have created new compounds, pyramine, epoxygenthetrim. Uh, all these are new compounds and we don't know anything about their pharmacological action. Wouldn't that be interesting to look at their antibacterial anti-cancer, uh, this is still to come in the future, inshallah. Uh, so this is, was a massive work, actually. It involved many partners. Uh, uh, I would thank my partners from Ag Research in New Zealand. I went there for two weeks and they were very, very, very busy, busy weeks. Uh, they are the company that developed the seeds with the endophyte. So when I went to their labs, they have, wow, I think 10 LCMS MSs machines, and each machine is dedicated for one type of alkaloids. They don't mix and remix the machines together. So it was a really nice trip to New Zealand. I would like to thank to my university, Charles State, uh, sorry, uh, University of Western Sydney as well. I've done some... Uh, a purification technique in Western Sydney, my university, Charles State University, and also Hebron University in this presentation. Okay, the final presentation, which is an easy one. In 2012, I moved from Australia back to Palestine. The Faculty of Pharmacy were three years old only. And we did not have those labs. So I had to adapt to that environment and to create science and to create research and train students. Uh, this project is pharmacist knowledge and the views uh, towards registered dietary supplements and herbal medicine is done by my students, Bisanieri. Bisanieri was a fourth year pharmacy student. And the, during the fourth year to the fifth year, students are required to do research work. So she came to me, I told her the idea, she liked the idea, and yeah, let's do it. Uh, we feel proud to have our students' name here, or even before our name. That's our goal, is to inspire you and give you that prestige to have your name published. So we feel so proud of Bisan because she published her work in one of the uh, international review journals. So what is the story of the food supplements in Palestine? Uh, so the food supplements are products intended to provide the nutrients that may otherwise not be consumed in sufficient, uh, in sufficient quantities. So it's uh, products that we sell in pharmacy, like vitamin C, zinc, iron, uh, uh, folic acid. And we sell them in our pharmacy because we don't have sometimes healthy food. So we lack some of these nutrients. 
Example of these nutrients, vitamins, minerals, fibers, fatty acids, and some amino acids. So who is selling these? Us as a pharmacist. So the complementary medicine, we came across this uh, three words in research. Uh, before that, I couldn't differentiate between them, but now I could. Uh, it's a complementary, means herbal drug used together with conventional medicine. So the food supplements could be uh, complementary. You can use it with conventional medicine. Alternative, when you stop taking conventional medicine, so in that case, as we call the herbal drug is an alternative medicine. Uh, integrative, integrate when you put things with other things, uh, is a herbal drug used in, with conventional in coordinated way. When your doctor prescribes a herbal medicine with a conventional medicine under strict circumstances, this is, we call it integrative medicine. So the story in Palestine is that the Ministry of Health is responsible for registering these products. We don't sell these products without registration. They must be registered. So they are responsible for registering herbal drugs and food supplements. They have two categories, herbal drugs and food supplements. Most of the herbal drugs sold in Palestine are registered under the category of food supplements. The reason being is the fact that registering products under food supplements is a lot easier than registering them under herbal drugs. Herbal drugs required more uh, strict approach to be registered. <clears throat> So during this study, it was 2017, we had 165 products were registered under food supplements and herbal drugs. 100, 165, it's not a big number though in 2017. And now we are 2022. I believe the number now, just add zero to this one, it's 1,650 products being registered during five years. Wow, this is massive number, isn't it? And you as a pharmacist should know about these products. So why us as a pharmacist? Uh, we are the personnel uh, responsible for providing information to consumers. When you sit in your pharmacy and a patient come to you and ask you about herbal medicine or a drug, you need or you have to be skilled to answer his questions. Uh, ensure the quality control of these products. You store them properly, you manufacture them properly. Uh, dispense, you are the one who dispensing these products. You are the one who's selling them. So you should be responsible for them. Uh, ensure appropriate use. Herbal products does not mean a safe product in all cases. Yes, in most cases it's safe, but in some cases, no, they're not safe, it, especially during uh, pregnancy. You have to take extreme care. Uh, detecting and reporting side effects. Uh, I remember one story. Um, it happened to one of my colleagues in the Faculty of Pharmacy and Herbal Medicines. Uh, he bought a cream for muscle pain from one of the pharmacies, and that cream contained emu oil. You know the emu? The animal. We call it na'ana in Arabic. The animal that puts the head in the sand. It's very popular in Australia. Uh, so the oil of that, of that animal in that product, and he had like muscle pains at the back, and uh, he put some of that oil into his back, but he developed a very serious allergy to that oil where he had to go to the hospital. So that one, one of the cases, which was very serious. Another case with another patient that happened with me, took the same oil, same product for joint pain, and she developed also some serious allergies. So I had to report this to the Ministry of Health that this product may develop 
uh, some serious side effects. It's a natural product, but yet it can be serious uh, to some extent. So this is one of the, our roles, detecting and reporting side effects. So what's happening in Palestine? Uh, the Ministry of Health is responsible for registering food supplements. So the companies uh, send the profile of the product with the samples to the Ministry of Health, and the Ministry of Health ensure that this product is registered. Then, after you register that product, you send it to the market. Okay, then uh, it comes, there should be a link between the Ministry of Health and the pharmacist. Mostly the link here is the, web, uh, the website of the Ministry of Health and the company responsible for marketing that product. That's why uh, our students, when they graduate, they are likely to find a job as a medical representative. We had 165 new products. So this, this means that we need so many medical representatives in the market. You as a pharmacist, you can't know anything about everything uh, in this field. So you need to be updated. You need to have the knowledge. So where to get the knowledge? You get the knowledge from Ministry of Health and you get the knowledge from medical representative. But in actual fact, what's happening with us in Palestine? Do you know where we get our knowledge? Anyone who guess? This is a problem in Palestine. We get our knowledge from our doctors. Can you believe it? Like you get that script, you read it. Wow, I never seen this product before. And you get the phone, you call the doctor, the doctor tells you this is a new product. You don't know about it? Oh, sorry, no, I don't know. Uh, this is a really bad situation where you put yourself in because you are uneducated. You don't have knowledge about the product. So we decided because this problem is increasing, it's actually increasing. I can show you my mobiles, how many scripts we get every day about a new product that is a herbal medicine that we don't know. So it's a problem for us. So from that point of view, we decided, okay, in 2017, to assess pharmacist knowledge about the newly registered food supplements. What do pharmacists know about the newly registered food supplements? So from that list, the 165 compounds, we took 10 new products and we formulated the questions on them. And we asked these questions to the pharmacist. And then we asked the pharmacist their views about registering dietary supplements, how, these, how the process of registration and marketing um, currently involving and what do you think about them? So it's like any questionnaire, those who are working in social sciences, they know that any questionnaire is consisting of part A, which is a demographic information and information about the pharmacist, their education, their experience, uh, all of these are included in um, section A. Section B was designed to assess pharmacist knowledge specifically with regards to food supplements. Uh, then section C was uh, to see pharmacist, pharmacists' views about registering food supplements. Uh, the questionnaire was designed and was distributed amongst us to see the readability of that questionnaire. Is it understandable? Any points needs to be altered, needs to be changed? And the data were once, uh, and yeah, uh, the questionnaire was distributed personally to the pharmacist at the time because you're assessing knowledge here. And when you're assessing knowledge, you don't distribute a questionnaire online because this will give the pharmacist the time to find the information, which is not the goal of this research. And you don't leave the questionnaire in the hand of the pharmacy and you come next day. So it has to be filled uh, at the time uh, the questionnaire delivered to the pharmacist. Uh, so these are the demographic informations. You can see males, females, almost 50-50. Uh, most of our pharmacists are young. 
between 20 to 30 years old. Uh, in terms of their employment, 50-50, some of them full-time, some of them uh, part-time employed. Uh, their education, most of them bachelor degree. Uh, country of graduation, mostly in Palestine, 50%. Area of a practice, yeah. Uh, this study is being done in, not in whole Palestine. It's just in the West Bank area. The West Bank area geographically is divided by three uh, regions. The north, which is Ramallah, Jenin, Tul Karim. The middle region, which is Jerusalem. Uh, the south region, which is Bethlehem and Hebron. So the north, we have 28%. Uh, 27% from the middle, from the south, of course, where we conducted the study, we had the highest number of responses. So these are nine, the nine questions we formulated at the time about uh, herbal medicines. I wouldn't go through them. Uh, the green arrows, uh, so the green bars, uh, where the pharmacist answered correct about these products, uh, the red where the answer where the pharmacist answer wrong. So, for example, uh, question two here. The manufacturer. We ask a question about the manufacturer of a product called Riprovit. What is the manufacturer? Most of the pharmacists they know the manufacturer. And then, for example, another example, let's move to question seven, for example. Uh, the strength of N acetylcysteine in a compound called NAC is in milligram. Also, most pharmacists have answered this correctly. So you can see from the green is more than red, which is good. Yeah, our pharmacists are good. But this is only 165 compounds at the time we conducted this study. Now, if we conduct the same study, do you think the green will be more or the red will be more? I expect the red will be more because of the large number of registered products that pharmacists may not know. So then we move to the pharmacist views. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, this is the last thing. Uh, so the market has uh, enough drug registered as food supplements. Most of the pharmacists strongly agree that the pharmacists, 50%, they say yes. Uh, the pharmacists also said um, they agree that the newly registered food supplements are necessary for public health. So our pharmacists, they believe that these products are really uh, important. Uh, about the views of pharmacists about Ministry of Health, uh, most of the pharmacists, they think the Ministry of Health should register more food supplements, but to cover broader range of the diseases. So they said yes about this. Uh, there is a lack of information about the newly registered pharmacists. He, here where the pharmacist comes to the fact that uh, during the time they are split like 40%, 40%. But nowadays, if they answer these questions, I think they will all come into strongly disagree. Uh, communication with Ministry of Health is effective. Uh, pharmacists, they communicate with Ministry of Health uh, through a, a monthly visit they have. The Ministry of Health comes every month to a pharmacist. And most of the pharmacists, 44%, they're saying yes. 30%, they're saying no. Uh, access to Ministry of Health website, most of the pharmacists, they don't access the website. So they get their knowledge from a medical representative or even the doctor. So demographic information in this study did not play a significant role in terms of pharmacist knowledge. 70% of the pharmacists, they have good knowledge, which is a good. 70% uh, of pharmacists rarely access Ministry of Health website. The, the Ministry of Health website is rarely accessed. Uh, Ministry of Health website appear to be less promoted. Uh, no one tells you about the, this website. Uh, Ministry of Health should reasonably communicate with pharmacists regarding what's in you in food supplements. Unfortunately, the Ministry of Health does not communicate with pharmacists in Palestine regarding what's in you. Maybe there is a need for registering a new food supplements that cover broader health issues. 
most of the new products are iron folic acid iron folic acid iron folic acid we don't have a variety which covers a broader range of the diseases a ministry of health should limit food supplement registration to what is necessary for the market we don't need any more folic acid and iron to be registered we need something else uh so yeah that's uh, the end of uh, my talk for today uh, i deeply thank my student um, b sanieri she is in the photo here and my lab technician uh, Hashlamoun, and dr ala who is a statistician and toxicologist in the faculty of pharmacy and he is now the head of the faculty of pharmacy uh, so i thank you all for your attendance today uh, I hope I have inspired some of you to think uh, that you are first year. During third year, you will be experiencing some research. Uh, research, it's a really fun journey. It will equip you with the skills that you would never been expected to have it. So thank you very much. And oh, how do you say? Teramakasi to everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, that was a great presentation. So please give applause again to Professor Abdel. Okay, now we come to the discussion sessions. Uh, there will be two sessions and each session is for two questions. Okay, so please raise your hand, stand up and turn forget to mention your name before giving uh, a question. Okay. Okay. Any question, please? Okay. From the left side. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, moderator. Introduce, my name is Dian Molidia. I am a third year student of the Faculty of Pharmacy, University of Muhammadiyah, Pekajangan, Pekalongan. Regarding what has been said, I ask permission to ask what is the best way to isolate bioactive compounds for, for plants? Thank you, sir. Yes, What is the best way to isolate bioactive compounds for plants? So, uh, she asked what is the best method or best way to isolate the compound from the plants? That's the first question. And the second question? Second question, please. Okay. Bisa pakai bahasa Indonesia ya? Uh, baik, perkenalkan, nama saya Adelia Fitriani. Uh, di sini saya ingin bertanya mengenai bagaimana kita mendapatkan senyawa bioaktif yang didapatkan dari beberapa gabungan tanaman. Terima kasih, Pak. Oke. Okay. They ask how to get the bioactive compound from several plants. Yeah, I think the, the question is similar. Oke, okay, one more question. Because the, the question is similar. Uh, okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Hilda Vitria Wulandari. I have a question from Grass Endophytic Research. Until now, like the one in the slide, what products have been produced? Thank you. So she asked what product have been produced by your, your research. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. That's all the questions. Okay, thank you for the questions. I will explain this with an example. Uh, the first question, which is about how do we extract these products? This is water. When you put a tea inside the water, the caffeine and the tannins, this water become red, especially in hot water. This is an extraction process. So water, it is good to extract polar compound. The polar compound are the compound are dissolved in water. The caffeine, one of the compound, it should be hot though. 
In cold water, it's not good extraction. So this is how we extract our compound. We choose a solvent other than water, which can get you most of the compounds. Sometimes we use dichloromethane. Dichloromethane gets you nonpolar compounds, the compounds that are not dissolved in water. We use methanol, for example. Methanol is, is to me, one of the universal solvents that I use because it takes, uh, say, 90% of the compounds in the grasses or in a plant. So the method of extraction, it depends on your technique. If you're looking at polar compound, uh, you can use methanol, you can use water. If you look at non-polar compound, you can use hexane, dichloromethane, and to some extent, ethyl acetate. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. So the second the question was, oh yeah, what compounds did we get from endophyte? Yeah. Uh, as I said, the endophyte is a source of a new compounds. Uh, these compounds belongs to a list called alkaloids. Alkaloids, they are the nitrogen containing compounds in plants. Not every nitrogen containing compound is an alkaloid. Okay, uh, the compounds that we got, uh, pyramine, for example, and lolithrim, uh, epoxy janthitrim G. Uh, there are so many compounds isolated from grass endophyte, and these compounds haven't been tested. What I say haven't been tested, we have never done any biological studies or human studies on these compounds. We just know that they are there, we detect them, we quantify them, but we haven't done any biological studies. Uh, the reason why no biological studies, because I've been working in the Faculty of Agriculture, and they are not interested in doing any biological study with that. So this requires a whole PhD to develop anti-cancer technique, develop antimicrobial technique, uh, cell biology technique, animal technique to see the toxicity of these compounds on animals. So this requires a student with a PhD to do such um, biological testing. So again, I'm saying the endophyte and the grass in combination, they produce a new set of alkaloids. These alkaloids are the most important secondary compounds in the grass in the fight mutualism. I hope this will answer your question again. Uh, okay. For the next questions, please. Okay, from the left side. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Perkenalkan, nama saya Adisti Rahma Ardania. Saya ingin bertanya, bagaimana tahapan selanjutnya setelah mendapatkan bioaktif kompon atau senyawa bioaktif atau hanya berupa isolatnya saja? Karena beberapa artikel atau jurnal penelitian hanya sampai pada tahap isolat. Terima kasih. Oke, okay. she asked about how the next step after we isolate the compounds. Because some articles mentions only stop uh, isolations uh, without any further uh, research. So she asks uh, about the, the next uh, step. Okay, the second question, please. Oke, okay. Bismillah. Uh, Wa arif nasi ana juan bukis pangguti. Wa ana min sana salisa mustawa al khamis. Uh, Afwan Syekh ana salah sal. Lakin uh, ana astagfir hadang bil arabiah atau bahasa Indonesia. <laughs> Di ana makun tu mahiran fi injilisi. So, let's see. Uh, he has in Arabic or English, yes. Arabic or Indo, anak makan tu masih ramai Angelesi. Kapat bisa mak kapat. Kau faham? So try your Arabic. It's okay. Nam, Bismillah, fitak dimikum. Asal ya ni, awalan. Kamu tak kalah, kamu tak kalah tu Anifan. 
Aksar minanabati fi Palestin aladila tu'rof. Aladila tu'rof. Uh, Masu'al min niyani. Uh, hal min bahis. Minal khari jil Palestin. Masalan fi Europe au Asia. Yabhas au yufatis. Nabat hunak fi Palestin dadalika. Sorry, I can translate. My guess. Oh, bahasa Indonesia banget. <laughs> Hopefully, Professor uh, understand. <laughs> oh. If I understand your question, hal ba hal yujat bahat min kharij Palestine? Baam. Muhtam fi nabatat fi Palestine. Ala di fatis nabat fi Palestine nadalika. Uh, so the question is, is there anyone outside of Palestine, any scholar, any researcher from outside of Palestine, is in, uh, interested in um, researching about plants in uh, Palestinian context? No, I'm correct. Yeah, okay. Okay, thanks for the first, the first questions. The, 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 next, the next step, after isolate have fonts what is the next step okay with the with the first question um let me go back uh, at the beginning of this research uh, we started this research uh, to screen palestinian wild plants for their biological activity so if we see one plant which is interesting in treating one disease or give us some positive results, we would go next step in isolating these, these compounds. Isolating these compounds is not easy. Um, the reason why these compounds, some of them polar, some of them non-polar. So you need to know which part of the plant you're looking at. Are you looking at the polar plant, polar compounds or non-polar compounds? And then when it comes, you know which fraction you're looking at. Uh, you need to separate these fractions to fraction like three or four fractions and you test these four fractions, which one is actually giving you the biological activity. Once you know the fraction, you send this fraction to a machine called LCMSMS. You need to know these compounds and you can basically isolate them. Or sometimes if you want to isolate these compounds, you send them to a machine called HPLC. Uh, HPLC is two, two types of HPLC. We have a preparative and we have analytical. So the preparative HPLC will tell you that you can ask the machine, that the compound A, I need it to be separated from the whole other compounds and then you test it. So it's a quite long journey, but it is definitely easier than a journey of developing a new drug. Why I'm saying this, uh, because nowadays we have so many diseases uh, that we don't have a treatment for. For example, bacterial resistance, we don't have a treatment for that one. So plants may provide um, an option for us uh, to develop or discover a new compound which has antimicrobial. Uh, so the process of separating, isolating compound, it is complex and it comes right after if your plant is proven to be uh, active against um, some type of diseases or some, some experiment. So you need to potentiate your work with experiment and see whether there is a positive effect, then yeah, we go and separate compounds. So this is regarding the first compound. I said the first question. Uh, with regards to the second question about, is there any other research from outside of Palestine? Yes, there are from Indonesia. <laughs> from Indonesia. <laughs> That's a very simple answer. Um, yeah, uh, I was invited once and uh, I was invited myself personally uh, to write uh, a review paper on the microbiota and the effect of medicinal plants. Uh, so this definitely tells you that 
yeah, some other scholars outside Palestine, they are interested in collaborating with you. And yeah, we did this work. We published this work, and it's now one of the top publications in the world in Frontiers in Pharmacology. Oh. So yes, there is interest. Thank you. OK. <laughs> Okay, uh, the last questions, maybe, please. Are the questions come from the uh, uh, committee? So the question is, uh, how about the government support related to the herbal medicine research in Palestine? And the second is about the how is the development of herbal medicine in uh, Palestine? Because the like you mentioned before, that the uh, integrated uh, medicines, uh, it's yeah, it's wrong way uh, to get formal medicines. So I think in Indonesia also uh, want to learn on the application of integrated uh, medicine in Palestine. Thank you for your question. This is very important. Um, I will start with the second question and I'll get back to the first one. Um, the, uh, what, what I wanted to say is, yeah, 20 years ago, when I was a student, first year, second year, third year, we studied topics like pharmacognosy, phytochemistry, and we were asking ourselves, uh, what are we doing? We don't need all this stuff. That was, in 1997, more than 20, yeah, more than 20 years. Yeah, more than 20 years. Uh, at that time, pharmacy was mainly conventional medicine. We did not have that much herbal medicine in pharmacy. So after 25 years now, I can see, I have my own pharmacy in Palestine too that 30% of the products in my pharmacy are from herbal origin. So the interest of this thing is I of my not interested in herbal medicine doing in herbal medicine targeting what in our human? What molecular markers they are targeting? So that's why nowadays we are interested back in herbal medicine because it is easy to develop a drug from herbs rather than going through the stages of developing synthetic compound then this synthetic compound it will take you 15 to 60 years to develop okay. a compound and the first question do we have get um, do we get funding yeah. uh, the universities in Palestine are mostly uh, private, let me say. Private. Uh, at Hebron University, it's a special case. Uh, we have been granted uh, to open a course, a master degree course in herbal medicine. So, and this is limited to Hebron University, not to other universities. So, other universities, they are not allowed to do this course. So, from that point, uh, it's like ask what you want and we will give you. Okay. So the university administration uh, gives us all the facilities, all what we need to conduct this research. So I'm telling you, that we started 2019. So over the past three years, we've been working so hard in establishing these facilities. So we had instruments, we have chemicals, and now we're doing some um, good research. And hopefully in the future, we expand to cell culture and animal techniques. Uh, you here at the uh, University of Muhammadiyah, you are so lucky. Everything is already established to you. Uh, you just need to get to the lab, uh, get yeah. to the lab technician, know the technique, and you will be awarded your degree at the end. Uh, but at the, at the time we, where we started, we had to establish all that from the scratch. So, yeah, uh, hope, hopefully in the next two years, we will find some of you specialized in herbal medicine. Okay, thank you. Thank Professor you. Okay. Thank you. Give applause to Professor Abdel. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, finally we are come to the last agenda. We would like to say thanks again to the presenter, Professor Abdel Kader.
and all of the audience for the active participation. So I would like to make a summary to this events. The first is the about the end of it. End of it is interesting uh, organisms. I think uh, it is more than you think. Uh, I mean, it's it similar with the plan and make a new compound to make a, a new indications. Yeah. And the second is about hyperventilation in Palestine, mostly in the form of the uh, supplementations or nutraceutical drugs. Yes, not in the herbal uh, drug because the regulations, uh, it's very strict. It, I think it is uh, similar in Indonesia. And the third, it's important to the pharmacist to know the product knowledge of the herbal medicines in Indonesia, uh, particularly. Okay, that's all of the uh, events. Uh, I think uh, uh, it is uh, enough, and I give back to the master of ceremony. Thank you, and give applause to uh, Professor Abdel. Thank you, Mr. Abdel Kodak Kosmo PhD, for the very inspiring and amazing class. And would like to ask you kindly remain on stage. And, for, and to Mrs. Apotek Rizaki Poliso, MPAM Clean PhD, please join to the stage. And also, we'd like to have Mrs. Wirasti to deliver the souvenir to our distinguished speaker and to Mrs. Apotek Rizaki Poliso. Thank you for Mr. Abdul Kader Kawasmi and Mrs. Apotheker Zaki Kwali of PhD. And then followed by the protestation, I would like to invite all lectures of pharmacy department and all participants to join the protestation. Please, to all participants to stand up. Yeah, please stand up because we are going to take a picture.
cek mohon perhatian untuk mahasiswa yang ada di baris kedua bisa turun ke baris pertama ya di sebelahnya Bu Aiman sama sebelahnya Mas Faris Yang belakang masih. Ya, selanjutnya yang belakangnya silakan bisa mengisi yang di depannya biar tidak kosong. Biar ter Ya, bisa di tangga bisa diisi monggo silakan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, please have a seat. 